I was just a happy bookseller, blissfully ignorant. And then I read about this book by Jack Rare, yeah. and it was banned in Canada. I thought, banned in Canada? How can things that are true in print form be banned in a democratic country? I couldn't believe it. I'm proud to say that I'm one of the people that got the law overturned when literature about marijuana was actually banned in this country from 1987 to 1995. It was not even legal to print a pamphlet and give out to people about marijuana. As a filmmaker, I love to create stories about awareness and culture, so living out west, I decided to interview Mark Emery. He's known around British Columbia, Canada, and the world as a person who's dedicated his life to sharing awareness about the plant of hemp and marijuana while also freeing the culture of cannabis. States has the worst jails in the world for the largest number of pot people and they want to in bring that here to Canada and if that happens the industry that profits by prohibition the prison industry is going to explode in this country and the idea of a civilized society is to reduce the number of prisons in your society when you have lots of people going to jail that's an admission of failure of your social system the conservative party is going to try and sneak that by so while you're having a good time today make a mental note that you've got to get out and do something. Talk to your member of parliament. How oh, I got kickstarted into this hemp revolution because I started in London, Ontario selling banned books and magazines about marijuana, ultimately right in front of the police station. Uh, it took me five years before we finally got charged and we did overturn that uh, bad law that banned books and magazines about pot. But we're here on an interesting anniversary today because as you film it, Bill C-15 just passed in our parliament ten minutes ago uh, with the support of the Conservatives and the Liberals, virtually all of them. If you're growing like five or ten plants or twenty plants and you sell them and you're involved with people, it's going to be a mandatory s six months if you're charged, right? So what you're going to see is a lot of people snitching out on their other partners. The police will say, hey, listen, man, it's six months jail, absolutely, if you go down, so you better tell us everything. And that's what happens in the United States. Mandatory minimums encourage a lot of snitching, and that's what swells the prison population, just more and more people end up in jail for long periods of time. It's going to cause a lot more misery that's completely unnecessary. The direction we should be going is repealing prohibition, not spreading the misery around further. And these will be people a lot of people know. These will be your next door neighbor's son or daughter. These aren't going to be big time kingpins. Those guys would get six months anyway. They'd get a year anyway. So while you're having a good time today, you've got to get out and do something. It sounds boring. It sounds pedestrian. It's really essential that you get involved in the political process. And you've obviously found your passion and <coughs> you've been able to share with the world. What would you want to tell people to get them to be inspired to find what they can do in their lives? Well, I would say this. Heroes are in short supply. I would say go do something heroic. You know, be an inspiration to others. Learn about the other great heroes and what they did. It's funny, oftentimes it only takes strength of will. You don't even have to do anything to become a hero. I mean, to some degree, you just have to say no, right? Like, well, you know, if you go chain yourself, you know, on July 1st, Canada's Independence Day or Freedom Day or Cannabis Day, and just say no to the drug war around you and chain yourself to a police station. Yeah, you'll get arrested and put in jail for misuse, but you make your point. You don't have to do anything. You just wrap a chain around you and you get arrested and you spend a couple of days, maybe a couple of nights in jail, big deal, you can survive it. And then you've done something. You set an example. You said no. You did not lend your, your tacit approval. You didn't let your silence be consent. You said no, I'm not down with this and you're going to have to arrest me, but I just want you to ha know that that's how I feel. And if anything from the newspapers comes and picks up, so that's all people do. You know what? It, it, you can do an amazing thing with a long bit of chain. Like, for example, if you really want to draw attention to something and you're really mad at something, just go in the middle of Lionsgate Bridge and walk right across with a chain and stop all of traffic going both ways. Unfurl a banner over the bridge so thousands of people can see it in the city and whatever it is against, and you're going to piss everybody right off. But man, by the end of that day, everybody will know what's bothering you. I want to overgrow the government of Canada. I want there to be weed everywhere. There should be cannabis everywhere. And we've got to do every single thing 
that's honest in our power to do that. We've got to plant seeds all this spring now that the spring is finally here in Ontario. Get out there and take your cuttings and your seeds and plant, plant, plant. After all, you know what I learned in kindergarten? I learned a song that can give us a place to stand, give us a place to grow, and we will call this province Ontario. They taught me that in school. They taught me that in school. I went to Sunday school where they taught me that it was God's gift that we should use everything he gave us. In Sunday school they taught me to plant seeds. Genesis 129. In kindergarten they told me it was my provincial responsibility to plant seeds. This is the place to grow. I'm only doing what my parents taught me. My Sunday school teacher taught me. My teachers taught me. So don't blame me for how I turned out. Blame the system. Fifteen did pass. Yeah. 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 Second reading or final reading or what? Third reading, so now it's going to the Senate. We should focus on what's going to happen in the next 12 months if the Senate endorses it. Is that so many young people selling small amounts of whatever to their friends in schoolyards, at social clubs, at dances, at raves, anywhere young people frequent. Right? We want to emphasize that. That means young people are going to jail, not old people. Like a kingpin is already going to go to jail for six months. Mandatory minimums will not affect upper level and middle level drug dealers because they're going to get six months. So we've got to change this to focus on the fact that young people are going to be taken from their schools and put in jail for a year or two. They're going to be taken from their parents and put in jail for a year or two. And to what end? They will be Then they will be joining gangs in jail. We want to draw those chains. In fact, I'll write that up for you. This is good. Okay, the last part is good. We need to talk about what happens when young people. It's only going to be young people. Guys like me, even, would already get six months to a year in jail, right? It's only normal people, like kids selling to their friends at school now, a kind of their surveillance camera, they're getting six months in jail, right? It's kids going to raves, because that's where young people frequent, right? So everybody at the dance that they smoke a joint or share a joint with or whatever, or sell weed to, is all part of that criminal conspiracy. So we've really got to emphasize that it's going to round up to thousands of teenagers and young people, they're going to go to jail, they're going to join gangs in jail, but that's what I want you to emphasize, the gangs run the jails, they're going to go to jail. They're going to come out and they're going to be asked to do violent acts as part of their gang initiation now. So we're going to send thousands of kids to jail who weren't really a problem, we're going to link them up with gangs, and then we're going to send them out in the street where they're going to be expected to commit violent acts against the social order. Thank so many of the people here are people that over the years I have met and I, I've sold you seeds and I hope you picked up my magazine, Cannabis Culture Magazine. I like to think it's the best magazine about marijuana and I'm proud to say it's Canadian. Uh, Lowe is well known for his marijuana activism and his promotion of hemp and the fact that it's a plant that can be a resource and very useful in our economies. I'm going to definitely be asking him about seeds and their relation to the earth and nature and that every seed comes from nature with this earth that we live upon and therefore there's reason for it. It can be used for our benefit for healthy lives and nutritional value. And I know Mark Emery knows a lot about that because I've had chats with him before and he is a very aware person with true, sincere passion.